YouTube, what's going on guys? My name is Mike, I'm back with another video. Uh, today, what we're doing is preparing the seeds for uh, the garden this year, the, this, this summer's uh, growing season. Um, so it's about mid-March right now. I'm in my greenhouse, I'm getting all my seeds started. Um, and I'm doing things just a little bit different than I did last year. So uh, this year I'm using actually um, potting soil. So a bag of soil that I bought from a local box store. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I, use, I used my own compost soil blend that I made last year. And what happened was there was a ton of weed seeds in the soil. And uh, as the, the, my, my garden seeds germinated, so did the weed seeds. And I was fighting them for the whole beginning of the spring, just coming out trying to pick around and, and pull all the weed seeds out of the, uh, and not pull the, the garden seeds. And um, I'll admit it, I made some mistakes and I actually pulled out all my varieties of peppers before they even grew. So I had to run to like a Home Depot and pick up the, the store-bought uh, burpee peppers. And those never do well because they're on the, um, the uh, salt, uh, fertilizer diet. I grow organically, so you know they go through a shock phase. They yellow. They never grow. It's just a mess. So um, we're staying away from that this year. We're doing the potted soil, and what I chose to go with was a. Um, it's this Fox Farm. It's the Ocean Forest. Now this is a really popular brand. Uh, they have it all over the country. I actually picked this one up locally, so you can get it wherever you are if you're in the states. Um, and what it is, is it, it's derived of um, shellfish meal, so like crab, shrimp. Um, it has worm castings in it, which are great. It has, it's mainly peat moss, which is good for holding moisture. And, um, and yeah, it's just an all around great soil. Uh, you know, that, that, that stuff is, is, is wonderful and it is um, used for seeds. So it won't burn your seeds up as they come out, which is great. So I'm gonna fill all of the, uh, the, the um, starts here. So, um, looking over, what I'm doing is really a variety of everything uh, that I like to grow in my area. Um, so I'm doing some tomatoes, eggplant, pumpkin, I'm going through kale, a bunch of varieties of squash. I love zucchini squash. We're going with um, watermelon and cantaloupe. I like to do those separate because those are vining and they kind of take over. Um, onions, I'm doing spinach, beets, lettuces. Uh, I, like my, my, my wife loves romaine, so we're getting some of that going. Um, cucumbers, three different types of cucumbers. Going to try out pickling this year for the first time, so that'll be fun. I have the Chicago pickling um, uh, variety, and I have the bush beans, garden beans, yellow beans. The yellow beans did great last year. I really enjoyed those. Um, radishes, broccoli, sweet basil,s and peppers. And I'll probably get a couple more varieties of peppers as time goes on, but um, you know we'll we'll see where that goes. And um, I also pre-labeled all of my my um, popsicle sticks here this way we don't get confused and mix varieties up it's pretty easy to see what's what once you know things start to grow and and get bigger so you'll know if something's a tomato or a spinach obviously but just to keep organized and not plant things in the wrong place I have the popsicle sticks so uh, I'll put those in after we we get them in but um, yeah, without further ado, let's let's get started. We'll start filling these these trays up with some soil. We'll pre-wet it, and then I'll go through how we get the seeds in the soil. Let's do this. All right, guys. So I have you angled um, in such a way that you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. I just want to show you um, kind of what I do. So it's this isn't really rocket science. Um, basically, I just take handfuls of soil and I just kind of spill it over the uh, the holes here in the trays. And then I kind of like wipe them in so they're all like level at the same height. Um, like I said, this isn't, you know, this isn't anything critical. Just make sure you don't overfill or underfill. You want everything to be kind of the same height. Um, so I'm going to go through and kind of just do this. And, uh, and then I'll show you the next step, the, the pre-moistening. All right, so we have them all filled up. Um, I went ahead and I just kind of leveled it off, cleaned it off a little bit. It's gonna, you know, it's not gonna be perfect and it's not, it's gonna get a little messy. You could do it cleaner than I did if you're doing this indoors or something like that, but um, I'm in my greenhouse. I'm just gonna hose it all off. It's gonna get soaking wet anyway. Um, so 
we're all set up now. I just want to pre-moisten. They are, it is kind of moist out of the bag, but um, I figure, I always like to pre-moisten a little bit just in case any of the soil sinks um, and we lose some height. Then I could top it off before I put my seeds in. So I'm just gonna give it a little, a quick shower. Nothing critical. All right, so that's it. It's really all, all I do. Um, and now these will kind of drain down, soak a little bit, um, and we can start planting our seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead, I always like to start the tomatoes. The tomatoes are my favorite. Um, and what we're gonna use is a dibbler. Um, and what a dibbler is, is basically a stick, and you stick it in to the soil. I actually have a piece of a fig here. Um, basically what the dibbler does is it, you, it just makes your hole for you. So let me get, bring you guys over a little bit. So if this is the cell that we're going to start in, we basically just dig down a little bit, make a little hole and get prepared to drop your seed in. So there's a rule of thumb with um, how deep you want to plant your seeds. So if it doesn't say it on the back of the pack, which most of these do, they'll give you a little bit of instruction on how uh, planting depth, this one is one quarter of an inch or six millimeters. So that's the, that's the depth that they give you. Sometimes they won't give you that or if you're getting your seeds second hand or through a friend, um, you want to go just one or two uh, deep depth depth of the, the seed width itself. You don't want to put a tiny seed, you know, two inches underground because then it has to germinate and then also grow that two inches to get to the sunlight. And sometimes it won't make it. So um, that's the little little tip for the depth. So I have all the all the depth, uh, the uh, holes pre did for the tomatoes. So let's go ahead and get those in. All right, guys, so that's, um, that's it. I got all the seeds planted, everything is in. Um, everything's labeled properly, no mislabels. I was very careful not to mislabel anything. Um, and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check back in um, a couple days and I will show you guys updates on how these do all the way to the point of transplanting them into the garden. So um, yeah, we'll be back in a couple days. See you then. All right, guys, just a quick update. Um, this was about a week. So nothing too crazy yet. We do have one cucumber. Uh, let me see if I can find it. One cucumber right there is just starting to break the surface, which is exciting. That's the white spine cucumber. And also we have some radishes. Uh, these are the champion radishes. They're breaking the soil. They, they do really great. Now the radishes are always quick up. So, um, you know, here's the evidence. It takes about six, six to seven days for your radishes to, to break soil, germinate and break soil from the day of seed. But that's about it on this quick little update one week after planting. So, uh, it's a game of patience, guys. Game of patience. We'll check in when we start to see some more seeds breaks and breaking some soil. See you soon. And boom, just like that, guys, we are back. And as you can see, we got some success on some of these. Um, some we didn't, uh, but most we did. I, I kind of um, let, these, let these guys just do their thing. Um, here we are, it's the, it's the first week of May, and we're ready to plant. We were supposed to plant this weekend, but we had a major storm. So I figured I'll let these guys let go in another couple days in the trays. 
and uh, yeah, we're ready to go. So I think I left off on that black spine cucumber. I think it was one of these, or uh, white spine cucumber, I'm sorry. And here it is, man, they do, they're doing great, but they definitely got to get out of these little cubes. Like you could see some of this yellowing here. This is not good. You don't want to really see that. You want to get these transplanted before. As you can see, we're all rooted out really nice. That's beautiful. So we'll get these in the ground and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and get to it. All right, I got everything laid out here. Um, I don't know exactly where, what's going where. I have a good idea. So um, back here, I have my tomato um, trellis system where I kind of hang string down and I let the tomatoes grow up the string. Um, so that's where the tomatoes are going to go for sure. I'll probably interplant basil in, in between the tomatoes and then maybe do a row of carrots right between that. that that'll do a direct seed. Um, so I think that's the idea for the back end. Now as far as the square foots go, um, each square foot's going to get something. I'm going to try to keep things together, but um, it'll, it'll kind of branch out. Now the way the sun comes up, um, so the sun hits the front of the bed and then goes over and it actually sets back that way. It's setting, it's about five o'clock now. So um, I wanna keep the lower crops in the front and the taller ones in the back. That's why the tomatoes are in the back. They get really, really tall. Uh, and that's kind of my guideline. I'm kind of just gonna willy nilly. Now I, um, I put my uh, cucumbers over here. Last year I did beans, climbing beans. This year I'm going to do cucumbers on this trellis up this line here and uh, that they always seem to do well here. It's really sunny and then in the mini orchard here um, I have a ton of um, uh, uh, strawberries growing. These are all strawberries. I'm trying to fill them in um, but for now I think I'm going to mound up some, some of the soil here and uh, put some zucchini. I'm just gonna interplant zucchini throughout here. And on, same on this side, I'm just gonna interplant zucchini and have a whole bunch of zucchinis growing. Now I have a lot of watermelon as well. Watermelon grow as vines, so I'm not too sure where they're going yet, but this is my other strawberry patch next to my um, cherry trees. So this is what I want that little part of the orchard to look like. It's getting there. These, this is a, the third year of this patch of strawberries. And you can see it's absolutely full. It's a full patch um, and it's beautiful. And you can see all the flowers. We're gonna get a ton of strawberries this year. We always do. Uh, this is the June bearer variety. And they all come at once. We, we get boxes and boxes of, of uh, strawberries, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about planting the garden. So. Um, like I was saying, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to interplant all types of veggies underneath uh, the orchard here. I have blueberries growing in this line. Um, they're actually not doing too good. I actually lost a blueberry there. But um, I'm going to replace it with a vegetable because why not make some use of that space? Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll go ahead, I'll get started. Um, oh, and one more thing. I wanted to just show you guys what I'm doing uh, with the, how I'm doing it. So um, these, this is my, my Hori Hori, my little Japanese um, spade, shovel, knife thing. Uh, it's really cool, I like this. It's perfect for planting little tiny pods. Um, and then this is the, the mycos. This is the mycorrhiza fungi that I love to plant with. Now this doesn't work for brassicas, so your broccolis, things like that, um, they're, not gonna, um, they're not gonna get this, but everything else will. All the nightshades, the eggplant, the, the tomatoes, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at. What I'm gonna do, is go ahead and just plant and then I'll give you guys an update once things are kind of where they need to be. Um, I don't have my tripod today, so I can't really prop you guys up for this one, but um, that's all right. It's pretty repetitive anyway. So I'm gonna just go ahead, get these in and I'll check in with you guys at the end. See you soon. All right, guys. So we got the garden planted. Uh, it's actually a week later. I, um, I was a little bit late to the punch. I've been saving, um, saving something for this video. And that's, uh, that's this stuff right here. This is what I was supposed to water into the, uh, the garden there when, um, as I planted things. But I had this on order. I had it ready for me the day I planted the garden. When I opened the box, it was the wrong product. They sent me something wrong. So I had to send it back. I had to wait for it to come. 
It finally got here and here it is. This is the Mycos WP, which stands for wettable powder. And uh, what's important to know about that is you can get away without sprinkling the Mycos, the mycorrhizal fungi in the, um, the hole that you're planting your plug into. If you use this, you can actually mix this in water because it's a wettable powder and then feed it to the plants after they're planted. And you'll still get that same benefit of in, um, inoculating your root system with mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, which is really cool but let me just show you what i did where i planted what i know that uh um like i said i'm a week late so the plants are a little bit bigger than what they were but it's exciting so let me show you okay so starting from left to right um here in the garden we planted our uh, our cabbages which is exciting and you can see i have a ton of clover the clover is really uh, doing well um, it's, it's doing its job that we talked about previously. It, it, it keeps that moisture barrier, it creates the canopy for the soil. Um, and the, the garden vegetables, they don't mind it. They, they, they grow with it and they actually outcompete it as they get bigger. But um, anyway, we have our, our cabbage here. They're doing real well. I have radishes, I have beets right next to the radishes, two plots of beets there. Um, I did peppers all in the back. You can kind of see them. They're doing real well. They're growing um, above that canopy, that clover canopy. Uh, this one is not doing so well. It's got some spots, some die off. I'm not sure what's going on here with this pepper, guys. But I'll push the clover back. Maybe it'll grow out of it, maybe not. This one's dealing with the same thing. Uh, not 100% sure, but the rest of them down the line look really great. Um, we have our kale. I love kale. I, I believe that's the blue dwarf. Um, they're doing really awesome. They're blowing out of the, the, the canopy, the clover canopy there. Behind them, we have more peppers. This is um, uh, Brussels sprouts. And what's interesting to note here, so I didn't catch this when I planted it. This is what the Brussels sprout looks like a week later. And then this is actually two Brussels sprouts that I didn't thin back. So that just goes to show, guys, why thinning is so important. Because you can see the one Brussels sprout is just taken off and the two that were planted together are just not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the larger of the two. I'm just gonna thin one of these back. Just pull it out of there. Maybe I can replant it somewhere else. Looks like I got a little bit of a root, root system with that. Let's see if I, I know we're getting off topic here, but let me see what this will do if I just stick it right in there like that. It'll probably wilt for a day or two and we might get lucky, so, all right. All right, back to what I was saying. So we got our Brussels sprouts there. This, this row right along here is Brussels. And, um, and then we have our broccoli. Now I'm a little bit behind the punch on the broccoli, but I think we're just gonna make it. I got them in at the end of March, or, or is it mid-April. Mid so um, coming around the bend here, uh, we have onion. I'm doing my onions here, eggplant. And uh, the eggplant is getting eaten up by those, those pesky eggplant beetles. But I have a, um, a secret ingredient for that. I'm going to use diatomaceous earth. And I'm going to dust those on there. Uh, more beets over here. I got more radishes. And I did a, a whole row of carrots here. So that's exciting. And then showing the tomatoes. Man, these cherry tomatoes are just really blowing up. And I have these in their own little section where I'm going to be running them up on the trellis line here. Pardon the movements. But as they grow, I'm going to be doing what James Prigioni showed me how to do. And that's just to wrap the tomato around this, this line here as it grows. And, and this line will um, support it like a trellis, just like that. So as it grows, I'll do that with all of them. And then these two on the ends, I'll just tie them to the posts. Got my green beans on the corners. I got um, some basil with the tomato, because who doesn't love a cherry tomato and a piece of basil? Um, and that's it for the raised bed. I have uh, eggplant over here in the orchard. Let me bring you guys over here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say eggplant. Uh, spaghetti squash. I've got the spaghetti squash over here. These are all gonna really pop up. You can see them interplanted. I got them about 
uh, three to three feet apart each. Now I didn't mound these, but they are on a slope. So we'll see how those do without. Usually I mound them. Everyone recommends to mound them. I didn't this year. I just want to see how they do without a mound. But they're in a wood chip, a wood chip bed here. Uh, no clover on this one. Here's another row. Um, this is spaghetti squash coming out right up this row here, uh, right on the other side of the orchard. And then on this side, we have just strawberries. Uh, these are the ever bearing strawberries, not the uh, June bearer. But I'll show you those momentarily. But um, yeah, everything else. I'll do a full garden tour another time. I just have too much to do today. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's get that water soluble um, mycorrhiza mixed up. And we'll get these uh, watered into the raised bed here. Let's do it. Alrighty, I got you guys lifted up with me, so just giving it a final pump. And in case you guys didn't know or you want to know, this is the Chaplin uh, Chaplin uh, cement sprayer. Uh, it's perfect for for watering gardens. Now, what I do is I take the spray tip off the nozzle, and it turns into a perfect stream of garden, uh, you know, to water plants. So that's what I do there, and it has a nice nifty little, you know, wand to it. So you squeeze it once it's all pumped up, and you get your water. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to show you guys, pardon the movement here. Uh, it's going to be tricky. Let me uh, get into position. All right, I think that's a good angle. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just kind of giving each plant a healthy, uh, healthy couple squirts just to get that, that mycorrhizal fungi inoculated down in there. So, uh, little by little, do all the beets, get it all and everything. Peppers. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go through, I'm adding this and I'll catch up with you guys. All right, guys, so that's the end of the video today. We got all these, all these little plants watered in with uh, the mycorrhizal fungi, which is awesome. Um, you know, walked around, I showed you guys, this was really like four videos in one. So for that, you guys should definitely hit the thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I'm a little bit sporadic with my video creation right now, but things are going to really uh, start getting on track now. We, uh, we're officially uh, done with all of our little side projects. So um, go ahead, hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.